So I'm going to go to the World Tour mode. I'm in the career right now. And actually, the car you're seeing up here is BMW M3. This is my car. So again, as I'm mentioning, find your own path. Find the cars to drive you. This is the car I drive to work in every day. It has the same black wheels, tinted windows, and it's got the blue metal fleck. So obviously, this is a car I'm passionate about. So when I play through the career, this would naturally be a car that I would use. Now, as you play the World Tour, we take you around the world to some of the greatest racetracks you're going to find. We have Infineon, Hockenheim, the top of your test track. There's an original track at the Swiss Alps. We even have Indianapolis. Now, of course, there are classic tracks like Le Mans. We have great tracks in this game. And when you go from location to location to location, we give you options of different races you want to do. And we did that in Forza 3 as well. But there have been some specific changes to this version, actually several, that really bring out the car passion of people as they play. So obviously, I'm in the BMW M3. And so I've got an option to do the E92 spec race. I can do the M3 history race. I'll get the M3 versus AMG race, the BMW versus S4 race. I'm going to get the history of M power, the rear wheel drive, the V8. You get my point. As I play through the game, there are always more events that feel like they were made for the cars that I love. And that means that my career and your career are going to be completely different based on the passion that drives you. Now, there's another big uh, change in here, in that when you level up in Forza 3, we give you a gift card. And if you don't like that gift card, I'm sorry, but you're going to use it anyway. And that's really not what Forza is all about. We want to give people choice so they can follow their own passion. So when you level up in Forza 4, we give you options of gift cards. So I might get an option between the BMW M3, Mercedes AMG, or an Audi S4, and I can follow my passion, I continue to get BMWs. I might get a choice between an old BMW 2002 or a Nissan Fairlady. And those choices are meant to kind of make you think, which way do I want to go, and get you more invested. And then the career is going to respond by giving you more events based on the cars that you love, based on the cars that you own. One thing I didn't mention, again, these uh, presentations I've been doing, honestly, I don't have a script. I kind of cover random features, I'm kind of harebrained that way, sorry about that. Uh, we have a profile import, so if you're a Forza 3 player, you played a lot of it, we're going to look at what level you were, certain cars you have in your garage, we'll read that in, and when you start Forza Motorsport 4, you start off with already a great car collection. Cars like the uh, 458, cars like the Bugatti Veyron, cars like the Peugeot 908. You start the career that way, and automatically you're going to start getting races that feel very natural for you. So uh, there's a couple of things I'd like to cover and get into the community, but really I want to get you guys playing. So uh, from a high level, a big part of the innovation that's coming to Forza Motorsport 4 has not only come through Connect, it's also come through partnerships and humbleness, humility, knowing that there are great partners that could make our game better in ways that no other gaming developer could. So for our new lighting engine, for example, this car looks pretty good. The reason it looks so great is because of the new lighting engine. We hired guys from Pixar, consultants from Hollywood, to help us come up with a new lighting engine. It's called IBL, image-based lighting. And it's what you see in movies like Drive Avatar, or, uh, uh, Avatar, as well as things like uh, Toy Story 3. And what it means is the car is lit by the environment itself, so it inherits all that complex bounce lighting. Forza 3, and pretty much all other racing and other uh, video game engines you play, they actually have a lighting object a model for the object, like the car, the character, and then they have a lighting model for the environment. And we have to tune them in the racing and gaming industry to make them look right. Now, it just looks right all the time. And that allows us to drive a track, create a track like the Swiss Alps, with incredible contrast between the snow and the rocks, and it just looks great. Now, we've done innovation in physics as well. Now, we've done some of the stuff uh, just because we're kind of perfectionists. We ripped a, we ripped a bunch of cars apart to study how their multi-link suspension was working, just because we thought we could do it better, and mostly because it's fun to tear cars apart and measure them and look at them. So we made the, that better, we made some other systems better, but the big innovation came through a partnership with Pirelli. We threw all of our old tire data away, and tires have always been a focus of Ford's Motorsport, but we figured there was a better approach. So we asked Pirelli to do custom tests, and they tested hundreds of tires across hundreds of conditions different compounds, different widths, tire sidewalls, stiffnesses and heights. They did different interior pressures, different heats, different attack angles. And we got 
reams and reams of data. Now what we did by throwing our data away, we changed our system so we could take the data from Pirelli and import it directly in the game without touching it at all. Now what that approach means is when you're driving the cars in Forza Motorsport 4, you are driving the most up-to-date simulation available today. This is the same approach that Ferrari and McLaren use for training their pilots. They work with a partner to get proprietary data that isn't available for anybody else, and they integrate that into the simulation in the same way. And it's that attention to detail and also that hunger to never be right. We have a hunger to just be better, get better, get better, get better, get better every version that means we're on the cutting edge of physics. Now we've had AI improvements, there are improvements across the boards, but I want to move on a bit. Let's talk about community. In Ford's Motorsport, community has always been a big deal. We have painting, we've got the storefront, the auction house. We've got people in our community that all they do is paint. And they're some of the wealthiest people in our community because the drivers, the engines that create the, the money in the economy pay top dollar for these great artistic works. And so that's what I mean when I say it's all about cars. Because you don't have to be a driver. You can be a painter, you can be a tutor, you can be a social coordinator to bring people together and get passionate around cars. Now we have new features. We have 16 player multiplayer. And that's great for the hardcore drivers, but if you're like most drivers, it means instead of coming in seventh place, you're now gonna come in 15th place. That kind of sucks. So we have new modes, such as Top Gear Football. Top Gear Football works how you might think. There's a big football in the middle of the pitch. We've got goals on either side, and you use the cars to score. Now in the show, they use foxes and items, little city cars that smash up. But when we play it at work, we play position football. So in defense, we put big SUVs like Q7s and X5s, Toregs. In the midfield, we use STIs, we use Evos. In the front line, we use supercars and hypercars like Ferraris, Lotus, Maserati. Now also at work, we're in a car club. Now, car clubs work like a clan in a first-person shooter. I can start one, I'll be the president, you can be the vice president. We can all get in a club together. But where clubs get much more cool is with what Forza does so well, Forza's DNA. That is car collecting and customization. So, we have collective buying power. I can buy the 458, you can buy the Bugatti Veyron, and I don't have to buy the Veyron because I can drive yours, whether you're online or not. And you guys can all drive my 458. So we have a giant shared garage that we can share things around. But if you've got a great painter in your club, he or she can paint all of the jerseys on your cars that you go play talk your football in. If you've got a great tuner in your club, he or she is going to make all the drivers faster because they can really bring the most out of the car. And that's how the car club brings communities together. You know, we have a new rivals mode, we have tons of new features throughout.